Yum, yum! Hey everyone, this is Wukash Pazera from Pixel Fondue. The look at constraint or direction constraint is a very common tool in computer graphics. If you use Modo, Maya or Blender to build animated scenes, you probably used look at constraint at some point. Two common cases are camera focusing on a given point or a character head looking at a specific target. In this video, I will show you how the look at constraint actually works. I won't tell you how to use it, so please refer to documentation for your particular software for that. Instead, I will walk you through the process of implementing the constraint in the same way it's implemented in your DCC software. And I'm going to do that in an informal, visual and hopefully artist-friendly way without using any programming. So if you're up for learning a little bit about the technology behind computer graphics, stick with me and enjoy the ride. To set up a look at constraint, we need three items or more precisely three points in space. We need position of the camera, so the, the object that we will be targeting at another object. Then we need the position of the target. And you can see as I move the target, the camera is, is looking at the target. And then we need the up direction point, which uh, is needed to define the vertical axis uh, for our camera. First, we need to consider what is the output of the look at constraint. And it's an orientation. But how can we define the orientation? One way to look at it is to define the direction for each of the axes uh, of the three-dimensional co coordinate system. So as you can see here, as I move my target point, you can see how um, those uh, three axes here are uh, representing uh, the orientation uh, of the camera. So in short, if I manage to say or to find which way the x-axis points, which way the y-axis points, and which way the z-axis points, uh, I will be able to um, successfully define an orientation. And the crucial thing to note here is that all three axes have to be perpendicular, which means at right angles, to each other. Only then we will be able to say that our three directions uh, define the orientation properly. What do we mean by direction though? Uh, how can we represent that? The answer is we're going to use vectors. We can picture a vector to be a segment of a line with the pointer at one end. A vector has a direction, which is indicated by this pointer, and a magnitude, which is the vector's uh, length. However, in our case, we are interested in direction only. So for a vector to be considered a direction only, it has to have the magnitude or the length of one. And it's called a unit vector then. Okay, so how do we define um, such vector? The vector is defined simply by coordinates of its tip in three-dimensional space, because we are talking about the three-dimensional um, vector. The base of the vector is assumed to be at the origin, so the point zero, zero, zero. And in this case, the coordinates of this tip define the vector. If we make the vector to be length of one, those coordinates, they become a definition uh, of a direction, which is exactly what we need. So now we know that we have to find three unit vectors that represent three axes of the orientation that we are looking for. The next question is, how can we calculate these vectors that we need? And the answer is, we're going to use branch of mathematics called linear algebra, since vectors and operations and vectors are part of linear algebra. Don't panic though, we'll use linear algebra purely as a tool without diving into how it works. One last note before we start implementing the setup is that we need to pick uh, which axis is going to, to point into which direction. Um, and I'm picking fairly um, standard convention here in which the uh, we look along the z-axis with y-axis being our up direction and axis pointing uh, to the left. Okay, so let's get going. I'm going to create the look at constraint setup using rigging tools inside Modo application. I have all the nodes required for the setup already in the scene and we will connect them up as we go. Like I said in the beginning, we need three points or three positions to be able to calculate um, the look at uh, orientation. And in computer graphics, transformations such as position, rotation and scale are commonly stored in matrices, which are also part of linear algebra. Modo is no exception here. And again, don't worry, we don't really need to know much about matrices. It's enough to say that we can extract the positions that we need from appropriate matrices 
this is what those uh, first two nodes are doing. They are uh, taking the word position in matrix form and extract the, the position and the output it in the vector form. So here we are uh, outputting uh, both the target and the up vector points as vectors. And then the next two nodes, they are making these position vectors into directions, which means that they are setting the length of these vectors to one, which in turn makes them into uh, directions. Now that we have all inputs as vectors, we are ready to perform further calculations. We're going to tackle the z-axis first. To get the z-axis, all we really need to do is we need to take the vector um, that goes from the camera to the target point and then set its length to 1 to make it into a direction. That's it. And if you think about it, we already did that. So these are the, those two nodes actually are already doing that. So first we take this position, convert into the vector, and this vector goes from the camera up to this point, but then we normalize it. So we set it to the length of 1. And that's just giving us our uh, z-axis. So let's let's prove that, and we'll connect this uh, the output, so this normalized um, vector uh, z-axis into here, and then you can see that it works. Now if I start moving my target, you will see that regardless of how I move my uh, target, I already have my z-axis working. So that's one third of the work done already. The x-axis or the side direction is next in line. There is an incredibly useful vector operation within linear algebra that is called cross product. When you do a cross product between two vectors, it will produce a third vector that is perpendicular to the first two. We are going to do a cross product between our freshly calculated z-axis and the normalized up um, direction to produce the perpendicular x-axis. Now I will take the output, uh, so the normalized up direction vector and plug it as the first input to the cross product and then we'll take the calculated z-axis and we'll put it as a second input and then uh, I will have to take the output here and plug it into my x-axis helper and now you can see it's working. So now I can test it again, move around. Actually, this, this axis doesn't do anything, but this way, now you can see that I have two axes. Now the one note here uh, is that the, the order of the inputs in the cross product does matter. So if I switch it, uh, I will get the, the axis pointing in an opposite direction in modo to have the proper um, direction um, the x-axis has to point to the left. So this is the order I need to do. And then one last note at this point is that we, we take the cross product output and we have to normalize it uh, before we are able to use it. To get the remaining y-axis, we will do another cross product, this time between our calculated x and z-axis. And again, the order is important. So let's see, I'm going to do x and z and we'll feed the result here into my y-axis and almost there so you can see that it's pointing in the wrong direction it should be pointing up so I'm just gonna switch the inputs and that's it now I have my setup complete we have the orientation calculated but now we need to set it on the camera to actually make the camera use this orientation we can't use vectors directly for that because, as I said before, in modo transformations are stored in matrices. So we need to build a matrix from our vectors. But don't worry, it won't be hard. This is a matrix. Think about matrix as a black box, a format in which we can store orientation. Rotation matrix is exactly nine numbers, but formatted into three rows with three numbers each, or three columns with three numbers each, depending on which convention you choose. In Modo, matrices are row major, so we're going to talk about three rows with three numbers in each. The result of our calculations is three vectors with three numbers in each. So does that sound like a perfect match with the rotation matrix? Yes, because it is. Just think that one row of the matrix stores one axis of our orientation. The x-axis or the x-vector goes into the first row, the y-axis or y-vector goes into the second row, and then the z-axis or z-vector goes into the 
third row. All we need to do is fill in all the rotation matrix inputs correctly and we will have a working rotation matrix. There's one more thing here though. When we go back to model, we will see that the matrix construct node actually has 16 inputs, not nine. And this is because the full transformation matrix is actually four by four, so 16 numbers. But still the rotation matrix is contained with it. I've already made all the connections. So you can see that what I've done is I fed the X axis into row zero, uh, 11, zero, one, and two. Then I'm going into row one with the Y axis, row one, element zero, one, and two. And then the same for the Z axis. And I'm leaving all the other uh, inputs intact at their default values. And now all I have to do is simply output this matrix into my camera word orientation. And voila. we have a perfectly working uh, look at constraint. I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching. Yum, yum.